Tell your neighbor, grow. Come on, tell somebody, grow. Yeah, grow. We're talking about growing. I got to do this real fast, but I'm going to finish this up because I have a, I have a word I want to share with you starting next Sunday. It, it's a, one of the better revelations I've received from the Lord that's entitled, this is going to be next Sunday, from a pebble to a pillar. How do we transition and grow and increase from a pebble to a pillar? And we're going to study the journey of Peter with Jesus. When he met Jesus, Jesus called him a pebble. When they write about Peter after it's all said and done, he's called a pillar. And there's a lot of process in between. I want to share that next Sunday. Don't miss it from a pebble to a pillar. Pebble, pebbles get stuck in your toes on the beach. Stuck in your sandals. You can, you can skip them across the, the lake a little bit. They're kind of insignificant. But a pillar, after it's forged and framed and fashioned, can hold up a great edifice. I maintain that every single one in this house can grow from a pebble to a pillar. Yeah. Amen. You look at it. They, still, they want to sing. No, 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 no. Listen, I said it Friday night. I'll say it today. There's two, two places I would not want to be. I would not want to be in prison getting beat up by the prisoners. And I would not want to be your guitar getting beat up by you. How many love Daryl Evans? Give him. We love you, brother. This, this brother's songs that he's written has, are all over the world. A lot of you don't know that. He's a humble man, and that's the way God wants us. But God is going to do more. Going to do more. Amen. Let me, let, me, let me go over this real quick, okay? Because, and I'll do this real quick. I really will. I, I, I'm going to finish this last part today, but I'll do it quickly. Let's just review real quick. We're talking about 2017, and I'm trying to get over into your spirit the word grow. Growing in all areas of our lives. It's so important that we grow. If children do not grow, we are greatly, as parents, concerned. We must grow as spiritual children. If we're not growing spiritually, first and foremost, God is concerned. And we must, must look to him for increase. So great things will be seen in 2017. It is the Lord's doing, and it's going to be marvelous in our eyes. You need to have expectation in 2017. It needs to be there. Praise God. Okay, so the, the acronym GROWS simply means the gospel reaching our world. I am praying, I am believing like never before that the church, this local church and the church at large, the church universal, will reach the world like never before. That we will be a force to be reckoned with. That we will rise up from obscurity. Come on. Rise up from our, our nap that we're taking. And we will be the church. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The head and the body are raised together. The Bible says we are raised to sit with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means as Jesus was raised from the dead, conquering sin, Satan, sickness, disease, hell, the grave, and death itself, we have been raised with him. Amen. We are not some bumbling idiot church that is barely getting along on barely get along street. We are not just keeping our head above the water. We're not fair to Midland. We are the resurrected, come on, victorious, blood-washed church of the living God. Jesus is the head and we are his body. Jesus did not commission angels to preach this glorious everlasting gospel. He's ordained, commissioned, and mandated his body, the church, with that assignment. 
Now, you can, you can run from that assignment, but I promise you, you will never, never have peace in your heart. Because it's something that's on the body of Christ. We are mandated. Not, we're not all called behind a pulpit, but we are all called to be his witnesses. And so we want to we wanna, we wanna preach, teach, share, witness this gospel around the world. The Bible says in Luke 2.52, when Jesus was just a 12-year-old boy, that he grew. He grew in wisdom. He grew intellectually and educationally. He grew in stature. He grew physically. He grew in favor with God spiritually, and he grew in favor with man socially, educationally, physically, spiritually, and socially. That is a well-balanced individual. Proverbs 11 says a false balance is an abomination of, to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. You don't want to be over, over spiritual, if you will. We're so heavenly minded, no earthly good. You don't want to just, you know, God hasn't called us to pray in, in, this, in tongues for 24 hours a day. But we're called to be spiritual, but we're all co also called to be social. Come on. God didn't call you to study, study you know, 20 hours a day because you, you think that's the way to, to, to go to get to head. Matter of fact, Solomon said, Solomon said, if you want to get frustrated, you know, just keep on reading a lot of books. And there's a wise man. He says at the end of Ecclesiastes, listen to the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. So if we're all academically, and, and I need to, to say that to some people. You're running so hard academically that you're, you're reading, you're reading you know, all, the, all the educational books, but you haven't read the book in a while. You're out of balance. You're out of balance. Okay, if you're some hermit, you know, living a life that you don't want to touch people, see people, talk to people, because you're holy, you're out of balance. Hello. Amen. So we want to be well balanced. Now, we, we took that and we took some... So we took some of uh, 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 that verse, we made, some, we made some growth goals out of that. And when we said wisdom, wisdom, we talked about seeking God, seeking God. We took the physical aspect and we said stewardship over our bodies, which are his temples. Specifically, we talked about holy living, presenting our bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Remember that? And we talked about health, okay? And we won't do it now because two of you are squirming back there and, you know, we don't want to talk about eating kale. But we, we want to eat right. We want to exercise right. Come on. This is stuff that needs to be talked about on the platform, on the pulpit, okay? So we talked about seeking God and His wisdom. We talked about, 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 about stewardship over our bodies, which are His temples and holiness and healthy living. And then in favor with God, anybody remember? You said, mm -hmm, what does it mean? <laughs> good, good. How to serve God in ministry. Okay, getting engaged. Getting engaged, okay. Where does God have me? Yeah. Everyone has a place. Everyone has a place in the kingdom of God. You've been called, amen, with a holy calling before the foundations of the world. You've been called with the hope of your calling. Amen. You've been called with a high calling. You've been called with a heavenly calling. All found in the word of God. You want to plug into what God. Growth Track 301 helps you in that area. And number four, favor with man speaks of soul winning. Good, 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 good. We talked about soul winning last Sunday. The importance of sharing our faith with others. Soul winning, but soul winning by developing relationships. Good. Three of you listened last week. I'm so psyched at that. Okay. That's why we review. Real quick, I'm going to do this. The five areas that I wanted to emphasize about growing is spiritually, numerically, financially, creatively, or innovatively, and influentially. I'm declaring to you today that God wants us to grow in those areas. So let's just take quickly, just a quick look at this. Let's talk about spiritually first. In a book, you can write these down. Ephesians chapter 4. You can look on the, on the screen. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read verses 1 to 16, but I'm not going to do that. I'll just read from verse 14 to 16. 
I'll read it from the King James. See if you can give me, in verse number 16 back there, see if you can give me the, the um, English Standard Version or a paraphrase on verse, number, on verse number 16. We'll get there, but do the King James first. Ephesians 4, 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, like, like the wave of the sea, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive. How many know in this day especially, there's many false teachers, false prof prophets, false apostles, false doctrines. You've got to be careful. That's why you have to know the Word of God. But speaking the truth, what is the truth? The Word. Jesus said in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy Word is truth, but speaking the truth in love, in love, may grow up, may grow up, may grow up into him in all things, who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Do you, give me verse 15 and 16. Verse 15 and 16 in, in, a, in, a, yeah, in the English. Could you go one, back, one, one verse back? Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, of course, Jesus Christ. Verse number 16. Watch what will happen. If we grow up, watch what happens. From whom the whole body, everyone say the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each, I like this part, when each part is working properly. When each part is working or functioning properly, what happens if everybody is, is functioning properly? Watch this. Makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in the love of God. You see the importance there. We have to be functioning properly. That's why we give time to lay hands on people and, and ask God to heal you if you need healing, whether it's outside or whether it's in, internal. We need healing. Why? So we can function properly. Why? When we function properly, when we work properly, it causes the entire body of Christ to grow, to grow so that we can be built up. Come on edified, built up in the love of God. And when you are built up in the love of God, listen to me, the sky's the limit. Paul prays in Ephesians 3 that you may know the love of God which passes all knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Love is the motivator. Come on. Love is what compels us and impels us to do the things that God calls us to do. Without love, we are nothing. Love is the motivation. Even your faith, Galatians 5, 6. Faith worketh by love. Faith worketh, energeo, energized. Our faith is energized by love. Faith and love work together. They work together. But love is the motivator to get your faith to express what God wants to say, what God wants to do what God wants to accomplish in the earth. Amen. So that's, that's growing up spiritually. There's a whole lot more there, but we must grow spiritually. If you're not putting emphasis on your spiritual growth, you are out of balance, and you will not mature the way God wants you to. You might have degrees behind your name. You might have money in the bank and vehicles in the driveway. But if you're not growing up spiritually, then God cannot use you the way he wants to use you. And why you were born, and more important, born again, he cannot use you in this life the way he wants to. Amen. Spiritually. Number two, numerically. Numerically. I'm going to do this quick. Numerically. The verse I want, to, I want to give you is in Exodus chapter 1, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. You know the backdrop of the story? The Bible says that Joseph, the patriarch Joseph, is dead, okay? The new Pharaoh rises up. Joseph had great uh, favor with Pharaoh. 
Joseph is gone, and the new Pharaoh is paranoid that the Israelites, the Hebrews, that are, that are, are, are growing in leaps and bounds will league up with enemy nations and make war against Pharaoh and Egypt. And because of that, as a result of his fear, he appoints taskmasters over the Hebrews to oppress them. Okay? You never want to make a decision motivated by fear. You never want to make a decision motivated by paranoia because it's usually not God-led or God-inspired. And that's what happens here. But I, I love this verse in Exodus chapter number 1, verse number 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more the Egyptians afflicted God's people. Any of God's people in the house? The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Amen. They grew numerically in spite of the opposition. Many of us make excuses why we cannot grow numerically, be it our business, be it our church, be it our family. Listen, excuses are nothing but lies wrapped up in skins of reasoning. God wants us to grow numerically. Amen. He wants your family to grow. He wants your business to grow. He wants the church to grow numerically. Are you after numbers, Pastor? Of course we are. We want to get people out of, out, out, of, out of going to hell, get them on the road to heaven. That only happens with an encounter with Jesus at his cross. There's no other way. Well, he's a good person. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. You're not good enough. All have come short. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, the mark of God. People have to have an encounter with the living Christ. And only his blood can wash away sin. Amen. And so, so numerically, we need to embrace growth. When the Apostle Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preached his, his three-minute message, it resulted in 3,000 people getting saved and added to the church. You need to grow numerically. Can you say amen? amen? Financially. Financially. I'm going quick. I was going to really preach, preach on these, but I don't have the time. Financially. God wants you to grow financially. He wants your businesses to grow financially. Amen. Some of you need to be challenged in that area. Some of you need to start tithing on your business. Amen. Amen. Prove God. Prove God. Listen, we have proved God in this area from, for some 39 years, the Bible is true. People can't talk me out of the Word of God. I, I, these, these wild people, you know, that, 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 that well, we're going we're gonna to really stump, stump you with, 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 with... Listen, we can go round and round doctrinally with some people, but you can never take our experience, our testimony away. I was a wild maniac. I'm not that anymore. I didn't reform my life. I didn't get religious. I didn't make some New Year's resolution. I was transformed by the transformer. His name is Jesus Christ. And he has taught me his word, and his word works. Not always in my time or my timetable, but you keep on holding on to the horns of the altar and his word. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should change his mind. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. If he spoke it, he'll make it good. Just continue to, to be connected to Jesus. Amen. God wants us to grow our businesses. Don't be satisfied with the, with the few that you have. Well, I got five employees and that's enough. Hey, listen, God wants to stretch you. He wants to expand you. Amen. Why? To make you rich and so you can buy more stuff? No. Or as my friend Bartimaeus would say, no. <laughs> no, so we can be a blessing. How could I be a blessing to you if I'm not blessed? I don't preach some million-dollar gospel. You understand that. 
I don't preach if you sow $100, you're going to get, you know, or a million dollars, you're going to get $10,000. I don't preach that gospel. But I do believe with all my heart, like Uzziah, King Uzziah, chapter 26 of 2 Chronicles, a young boy, 16 years old, he started to reign on the throne at 16 years old. And the Bible says, 2 Chronicles 26, about young King Uzziah, as long as he sought the Lord, God caused him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord, God caused him to prosper. If the king is prosperous, the kingdom can be prosperous. If the Christian is prosperous and blessed, you can be a blessing to others. When you pass someone on the street with a sign, homeless, no food, you say, well, I don't know if all that's true. Who cares if they're telling the truth? When you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto him. I don't rationalize. By the time you rationalize that the guy's right or wrong, you've lost your blessing. But you have to have something to bless them with. I keep a, benev a benevolent envelope in my car at all times. Right in my visor. Right, Sister Debbie? It's right in my visor. And I am ready at all times. When the Spirit of God moves upon me, if I see someone or whatever, I'm ready to get in into that envelope with, filled with money and bless somebody. But I have to be blessed in order to bless. And I have to seek the Lord. Like Uzziah, as long as he sought the Lord, God caused him to prosper. Look at Deuteronomy real fast. Deuteronomy chapter 8. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not, going, after, we're not going after money. We're going after the master. Make that very clear. But God wants to bless his people. He wants to prosper you financially, in your home, in your business. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. But thou shalt remember, listen now, listen. Me and, me and Joy are going through um, the devotional that I wrote. Every day we go through the devotional. Really, it's at nighttime that we do it. And we read the devotional, we talk about the devotional, and we, we, we do the Bible trivia and whatnot, and we're reading through the Bible together. And, and last night we were reading the devotional, and we were talking about the importance of the promises of God that are conditional. And Joy said, conditional, she, didn't, she, she couldn't think of the word, I said the word, but she knew what it meant. If we do our part, God will do his part. Here's, here's the condition. But thou shalt remember, verse 18 of Deuteronomy 8, but thou shalt remember the Lord your God. We must remember him, amen? For it is he, not you and your, your great marketing ability, not you with your great financial portfolio, not you with your great degrees. It is he who gives you power to get wealth. See, when you think you do it, you won't give it away so much. When you think you, you, you attained it by your brains and, and your strength and, and your, your accomplishments, you won't be free to do it what God wants you to do with it. But when you know that you got where you are because God has blessed you and you remember what he's done, amen, you're open to, to be a blessing. It is he who has given the power to get wealth. That why? Why does he make us wealthy? Why? That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto the fathers as it is this day. Why? God wants us to promote the gospel, to finance the gospel. Amen. The church should never be in lack. Never should be in lack because we should be free. We should be blessed financially, growing financially, so we can give financially. Amen? Amen. Number four. Number four. Let me give you one more verse on finances. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. And here's the important one. Even as your soul prospers. Number four, creatively. Creatively. God wants us to grow creatively. You know the verse in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created. God, Elohim. The Hebrew word there is Elohim. The plural noun, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created 
the heaven and the earth. You say, well, what does that mean? God's God. Well, I got news for somebody here today. If you are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, born of the Spirit of God, the Creator lives on the inside of you. Turn to Colossians. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created. Say, he's a creator. Colossians 1, verse number 27. Colossians 1, verse number 27. I want you to see this. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Watch this now. Here's, here's this awesome mystery. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. The Bible clearly states that all three were involved. The Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Christianity, we don't serve three gods. We serve one God. Three personalities, three persons in one. The Father, God, who is all God. The Son, who is all God. The Holy Spirit, who is all God. Not three gods, one God. Amen. Amen. And all were present at creation. The Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus was the one because he is the express image of the Father. He spoke the worlds into existence. I believe that's Hebrews 1. Uh, Verse number 3 and 7 around there. He spoke the worlds into existence. Jesus is the creator. Can you say amen? Amen. The Spirit of God is the creator. The Father is the creator. They are the creator. God is Elohim, the covenant creator God. The plural noun, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In the beginning, God created. We all say, yes, we believe that. But listen. In this New Testament dispensation that we live in, those that have bowed their knees and opened up their hearts to Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ, the Spirit of God lives in you, Christ in you, the Creator who gives creativity, lives on the inside of you. The Creator. The Creator. Well, my business, my life is humdrum. It's just same old, same old. Not good. The creator lives in you. With creativity. Innovation. Witty ideas, witty inventions. He should be given the body of Christ especially. Witty ideas, witty inventions that you will patent. To make money. To finance the kingdom. You talk about writing songs. Brother Darrell. You will write more songs in 2017. The first half a year is 2017 than you did the last six years. For the Lord would say, out of your wounds, there will come worship. Out of your sorrow, there will be new songs. Because the Creator lives inside of you. You don't have to bang your head against the wall and say, let me get a good idea here. You just got to spend time with the Creator. I wrote the book Backlash. Some, you know, we haven't gotten it published yet, but it's about the back of, why the back of Jesus? Why His back had to be striped? I didn't read that in a book. I didn't get that myself. That came out of, out, of a, out of a relationship with God. The creator dropped into my spirit why his son's back and only his back that is prophesied from Gen- Genesis to Revelation had to be striped because by those stripes, we are healed. Innovation, creativity, Innovatively, God the Creator living inside of us to expand your business, to expand your portfolio, to speak into your kids' lives, to raise up godly kids. 
The Creator's inside of us. Oh, I don't want to get off it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We need to grow spiritually. We need to grow numerically. We need to grow financially. We need to grow creatively and innovatively. And we need to grow influentially. One verse and I'm done. Turn to Acts 17. I, I probably didn't give this the best shot today, but, it, you know, man, I just wanted to I like that stuff. I think it's good. Breakthrough. You break some strings in the process of breakthrough, but that's okay. It's all right. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Just one verse. I'm gonna, I could give you others. Influentially, Lord, may I grow influentially. May my life be a living offering to you, but a life that will touch, inspire, effect, impact, and influence other lives around me. On my job, in the marketplace, in the schoolhouse, in the church house, where I live, my community, my culture, may I grow influentially. May my life and the touch of God on my life, I don't deserve it. Jesus made me worthy, made you worthy. May his touch on our lives spill on other lives. Acts 17, verse number 6. Again, I can't give you the backdrop. Our time is, is gone, but these are Christians. We're talking about Paul and Silas and their company. And when they found them, not, they drew Jason and certain brothers unto the rulers of the city. And here was their charge against the Christians. These that have turned the world upside down are come here also. That was their indictment. They've turned the world upside down, these Christians. They're shaking things up. They're engaging the culture. They're dealing with issues of importance. They're not elevator music. They're not Christian incognito. Christians undercover. There are some circles of Christendom that you can't really differentiate from the word people and the worldly people. Because for some reason, Christians think it's cool to blend in with the world. The Bible says... We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And the touch of God on our lives should be so potent and powerful, pungent, if you will. We are called salt and light. I've been really cutting down on salt. Another thing taken away from me. Himalayan salt, pink salt is, is cool, is good, but I've been cutting down a little bit on everything. And I had a bonito. You know what a bonito is? A bonito is, a, is, a, is an organic bean chip. You'd love it. <laughs> Bonitos, you like them? They're fantastic. And the reason why I haven't eaten them is because I don't eat three. I eat the whole bag. <laughs> and, and I did that yesterday, and they, they got, you know, the Himalayan salt on them. I think there might be even sea salt on there. And... Man, salt makes its presence known. <laughs> you know when something's salty. Salt and light makes its presence known. It is influential. We can walk in here, it could be dark. Light one match. Your eyes and your focus will go to that light. 
We live in a world of darkness, yea, gross darkness, but ye are the light of the world. Ye are the salt of the earth. Salt cannot hide and light cannot hide. It's influential by nature, by the genius God made within, and so are you and I. May we grow in 2017 influentially, not, not, not succumbing to the subcultures of our day. Hello. Yeah. Not thinking that cool is parallel with Christianity. But engaging the culture, impacting people's lives, influencing people for the kingdom of God and introducing them to the king. There is no life outside of Jesus Christ. You might be living, but it is not called life. May we be a people of 2017 that will see great things. We'll see the Lord's doing. It'll be marvelous in our eyes. Great things will be seen in 2017. Maybe learn from the young child Jesus to grow in wisdom and stature, favor with God and favor with man. Maybe grow in our seeking of him this year. May we grow in our stewardship over our bodies, which are his temples. He chooses to live in, our, in us as we walk in holiness and understand health, true health, keeping our bodies pure in all areas before God. May we understand that God, as we're functioning and working properly, May we understand that he wants to engage us in serving him in ministry. Don't just come here. I hope the pastor's got a red-hot sermon today because I'm in trouble. But come and listen to the red-hot sermon. <laughs> but put your hands to the plow somewhere. Use the gifting and the talents and the anointing that God, the sovereign of the universe has put inside of you. Make soul winning a priority. Develop relationships. Establish relationships outside the house of God. Befriend people. Go to Samaria and talk to the woman at the well. Talk to Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Talk to some Mary Magdalene's that are bound up in sexual sin with spirits of uncleanness. You say, why? Because you are a Christian. And you represent Christ. And you have his power within you to set the captives free. Determine and purpose and resolve in your heart to grow spiritually. We grow up. We function properly. The body grows up, builds up in love. Purpose in your heart to grow numerically. Your family. Your family. When I counsel young people, when they want to get married, we go through hours and hours of counseling. Hours. But I ask them, do you want children? I first ask them, everything okay medically? Everything up? Yeah, everything's good. Do you want children? Nah. I challenge that. Read Malachi. The main reason... Oh, I'm going to mess you up now. <laughs> the main reason for marriage is to not have some hunk under your arm. It's not to have some babe on your side. It's not for sexual reasons, for the, for the sensational part of it or the, the, the intimate part of it. One main reason, God says, marriage is blessed and important so that you will have a godly seed. Is that what it says? That's what it says. A godly seed. Grow your families. Get married first and then grow your families. 
Amen. I'm not talking about fathering 10 kids outside of holy matrimony. Okay? Anybody can have kids. Being a true father, true mother, something else. But I'm talking about out of love, God bringing someone into your life. They love God and they love you. She loves God and she loves you. And together, okay, do your thing for a couple years, whatever you got to do. Go see the world, whatever you got to do. Debbie got pregnant three months after we were married. <laughs> How much of the world do I want to see? <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get this thing going here. I want to raise some godly seed. I want some legacy. I want my offspring and their offspring and their offspring. My word shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of your seed's mouth, nor out of your seed seed's mouth. You got to have some seed. Got to have some numbers. Some of you are doing better than others in that area. Grow numerically. Grow your business numerically. Let God expand you. Don't be content with your little business. Perhaps God wants you to increase. Grow spiritually, numerically, financially. Let God grow you financially. Don't be content. Not, not, not to consume things upon your own lust, but to be blessed so you can be a blessing. Grow creatively. The Creator lives inside of you. Man, I wish I had an hour just on that. Because there's things inside of you. There are things inside of you. You just need God to touch it more. You need God to breathe on it. And you watch what will come out of you. Well, I could never write a book, Pastor Joe. That's what I said. But there's books inside some of you. There's volumes inside. Your life is a book. Your life is volumes. There's songs inside of you. Creative, innovative things that the Creator has put there. When you were in your mother's womb, yea, even before you were in your mother's womb. Amen. Before you were formed, I knew you, saith the Lord. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. Notice the order. Sanctify and then ordain. Today we're ordaining people and hoping they get sanctified. Pastor, I better close right now because I feel it. You understand, I could preach for three or four hours. You understand that. But I know you can never listen for that long. And I can only do it by the Spirit of God. I have to force myself in our three-hour Albi class to take a break. I, I do it for the people, not me. I don't need the cookies and coffee in the middle. I don't drink coffee and I don't eat cookies. <laughs> and let's grow influentially. May our lives in 2017 make a difference where they say of us, uh, that guy, that, that gal is here. She's turning this company upside down or right side up. Hello? Amen. May it be said of us, with our lives, that we would influence, impact, and affect other lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you bow your hearts?